in order to understand this video try to keep this in mind you can't start a fire with burnt wood hey people this was Christian Herrera here I'm sorry I haven't made the video for some a long time but I've been busy today I'm going to do something quite different I had a plan to do as you may see I have my car up I have my mechanics beer and my mechanic shoes on <laughs> I was going to fix um, I was going to fix an exhaust leak I got uh, the other day I was driving to my boat and uh, some asshole have moved a uh, chain that's on the way <coughs> and uh, it tore a big hole in my whole exhaust pipe I did a temporary fix yesterday but um, I have a small leak still uh, I don't know if I'm going to use putty or if I'm going to actually do a better fix and uh, screw in uh, type uh, a piece of metal and, uh, and, uh, and use uh, the putty for sealant but uh, for now the, 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 the hole is doing great and the, the main thing is to is for the exhaust pipe not to leak so I think I'm going to try the party at first. I'm sorry, I'm going to open my mechanics beer. But what happened now, it's, it started raining. The weather got bad. And I don't really feel like... Uh, yeah, say hello to Kitty. I don't really feel like... Uh, I don't really feel like... Uh, working underneath the car when it's wet on the ground. and uh, Yeah. So that's that. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to get the charger for my phone. I'm back. I put the charger in my phone. It was go it was running em empty. Well, now in this Corona time, I'm getting really sick of it. Uh, I had a, a strange disease, and uh, it's over now. But uh, it's very stubborn. It still wants to. It still doesn't want to leave completely. But it's what it is. I mean, I'm in good health. But what I wanted to talk about, it's uh, what I'm getting sick of. It's actually the polarization between the people. Here in Sweden, we have, as you may know, gone a different route than everyone else. <coughs> and uh, we have a lot of deaths if you compare to uh, Norway and Finland. I mean, we have like. If you take the population, and uh, we, have, we have much more death, and our government are still just saying that uh, we had the bad luck that we didn't, be, we wasn't able to protect our elders and, and stuff. But what they don't, what they don't admit, it is it's it's actually the the political decisions and the lack of acting that's come to this. But still, we have to protect the economy. Uh, I've been um, talking a, a, long, a long time that uh, we should be acting proactively from the beginning and then we have, we have uh, much less of an impact on the economy and we could still have the economy running, people going to gyms and stuff while, uh, while we did better tracking of the people that, uh, that, that was infected, close the borders to infected countries and you know, all, all that stuff. And then we had uh, would have stopped the disease from the beginning, but uh, since we, the, our government seems to want to infect everyone, so we can get the herd immunity, or what they think would happen. <coughs> um, it's what it is, and we're, go we're going to uh, we're going to have a lot of that. But now to the fun part, not to the, to the interesting part. I think I'm going to start with. Uh, um, this I think I'm going to start with. Uh, I want I want I'm going to talk about the comparison of uh, of this disease or, or any any viral disease with a wildfire. Actually, I was we were having a discussion in Quora of, about this virus, and um, I came up with an analogy with a wildfire. I mean I mean I'm not a doctor, but I've been studying a lot. I liked I love to gain information and. 
also I made an analogy with a wildfire after my my understanding of the situation and I want to share it with you because it was actually a kind of good comparison of, of what are the different outcomes we can have and why but to start with that uh, I'm not so worried about Sweden um, if you take in the United States we have a young a lot of young people getting getting infected and uh, <coughs> and um, gravely so but I think that has to do with obesity actually because if you look at the different risk groups uh, there are type 2 diabetes high blood pressure cardiovascular disease all those all of those I, I might call it systems but uh, well comorbidities we can say that is are actually very common in obese people in Sweden the general health is kind of good when the, we, we don't have so much obesity well in the younger generations we're going starting to have it but uh, in the older generations the obesity rate is kind of low <coughs> which actually gives us uh, a better ground to stand on I think we can fight this off differently thanks to we have less obese people but with that said uh, they still, our elders are still suffering a lot and uh, yeah it's what it is <laughs> okay now let's go to the analogy there was some, a question in Quora uh, they were asking about um, how long we thought this uh, disease and this situation would continue and there were some answers, some some answers that was too, um, how do you say, academic for, for most people to understand. And there were some answers that was just plain stupid. And um, then I came to think about um, the Ebola outbreak we had a couple of years ago when they were talking about uh, P, the, 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 the base for the virus burning out. And then I came to think about to compare this with a wildfire because there are a lot of similarities actually. Uh, what feeds a fire is actually wood, well, combustibles and um, and uh, something to oxygenate it, like um, oxygen. Without those two components, the the, wire, the fire can't survive. And if we can compare the people in a certain country, well, the, the population with um with the wood with the combustibles we come to an understanding that the fire can't spread forever because when something is burnt up it's burnt up so assuming that we gain some kind of immunity well for one year two years or at least after getting infected assuming that the fire will burn out because it can't get any more combustible to to keep on spreading. So that's that's the risk. That's why uh, infectious diseases that uh, that uh, need requires uh, close contact <coughs> to spread seldom um, spreads too much because it kills off the whole population around and when everyone is dead they can't continue spreading the disease but the for instance the, i think it is cholera that can spread it through sewage when people use the use the rivers to drain the sewage then the virus could spread much longer without requiring um, uh, requiring um, uh, close contact and when you don't require close, close contact, the virus doesn't care if it kills up the, out the host or not. <clears throat> and another assumption, another thing we have to realize is that uh, we, the people, we, we're, the, we're the hosts, we're actually the reproductive organs of the virus. Without us, it can't reproduce. If the, if the, if the virus can't spread, the virus will die off either by our immune system fighting it off or it will die off by killing the host so with that with that said 
you can treat a fire in different ways. You can combat it, that you can call like uh, the, um, the strategy that some uh, epidemiologists were talking about is to contain the disease. Or you can mitigate it, which we could say that you can also mitigate the fire. You can control the fire, burning it off slowly, or you can just let it let it burn out. So the difference is that what happens if you try to contain disease, similar to a fire, if you put out the fire, you still have a lot of combustible around. You still have a lot of wood around. So the problem is that if you get a spark or something to lighten it up again, it will start burning at full force again. And and that's that's one of the <coughs> of the fears that the 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 countries that are going for the mitigation approach are actually concerned about. But we can also understand that if the whole world would close down for a month, we would actually eradicate the virus because if it can't spread from nobody, then it would die out either by killing the host or by the host killing the virus. And then we have no virus no more. But for that to happen is almost impossible. I think it's impossible. Uh, we have third world countries uh, and uh, we have also a lot of irresponsible people that uh, would uh, defy the quarantines and yeah, no, it wouldn't work due to the, the selfish nature of the human being. So it wouldn't work. People are idiots generally. Well, so with that out of the way, we have to understand another thing. Like look at China or South Korea. Now they are very concerned about the, the, the disease coming back from people that are out in the world that we still haven't controlled their disease, which is um, a fear that it's, um, how can you say that? I don't know the word in English. But it's it's a it's a very rational fear because uh, if we don't uh, if we because they still have a lot of wood a lot of people that the fire can burn up so so that's that's for that it could work but then we need to as I said we need to control the whole world for for a long time then when we're talking about the mitigation approach to to try to burn out the fire slowly and that's what they're talking about flattening this famous curve the fire will take a much longer time to burn out then we, we we feed the wood slowly so it can burn out the wood slowly and then we get them we get this herd immunity that people are talking about uh, the problem with this approach it's that Viruses tend to um, tend to um, first of all the economy will be shut down for a long time, and the economical problems will, will actually surpass the virus problem. Uh, I was looking at studies that they made from uh, from with with antibody antibody tests from Germany and Italy which shows that the death rates are so low, like 0.35, well, uh, yeah, 0.35% up to 0.5% when they count in the people that didn't, was, didn't show symptoms. So the death rates aren't so high, actually. <clears throat> but 0.5% um, of a shitload of people is a shitload of people, and that's what we have to understand. There's a lot of people that's going to die if we spread it loose. And even if we do this with the mitigation approach and keep the hospitals running. But, as I said, viruses tend to mutate. And this is the case with, for instance, the common influenza virus. Is that uh, it mutates very simple. It mutates every year. That's why we can get the influenza year after year after year. Because... It's a different strain of influenza that comes back. Now, this coronavirus doesn't seem to mutate as fast as um, as uh, as the influenza virus, but we still have that that risk. 
And the more people that we infect, the bigger the chance for a mutation. Okay? And that's something we have to keep in mind as well. The more people we infect, the bigger the chance for for random mutations. Man, I love you. So, <clears throat> but what would happen if we burn out the fire really fast, if we just let it spread? Well, the, the it would be devastating. I mean, if you let the house burn down very fast, it will burn down the whole house. Then you want to stop with the, like, uh, if you would control the fire slowly, that you can keep some infrastructure, but it would burn out the whole house. And this this is the same thing. And the the more, the, the, the faster the fire burns, the more people will die. And that is to want to do to our, our health care. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be able to treat people with the kind of mild symptoms that would survive otherwise <clears throat> and the second part is that uh, we will get a virus load and some studies suggest that the virus load when infected affects affects the severity of your symptoms so if you get a, a big virus load when you get infected uh, you actually develop worse symptoms than if you will get a light virus load. Now, this is not confirmed, so don't take my word for it, but it was some data suggests and some scientists are suggesting, which is kind of interesting. So, but if you, so if you had let the virus spread uncontrolled, we would actually get a much bigger virus load around because people wouldn't take care of themselves and people would go as normal and we will get a lot more uh, sick at the same time. We would say that the, the healthcare systems wouldn't be able to cope with that and people that would survive otherwise would die. Uh, so that's I think that's a kind of good comparison, a good analogy that you can use if you want to explain for people uh, the, um, how a virus spreads and how the different approaches works because uh, if you think that you have a spread or we say that every p person spreads it to two persons in average what will happen in the end is that the, 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 pe the, the people that we will infect or the fire or the, 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 um, the combustibles for the fire won't be there so you can't start the fire with burnt wood so that's that okay uh, this video is getting long and i hope i really hope you appreciate uh, these videos as i said before um i want to hear from you i want to, you to know first of all i am not pro i mean i'm not i'm not the uh, my my what i think about how how this should be handled i don't know uh, what i know is that we should have acted fast and hard if everybody would have done that we didn't wouldn't have a problem <clears throat> but now the, the shit is here the, the, the virus is here it's spread all over stockholm is uh, it's a it's a hello and what i find uh, very interesting is that yeah, when I've been in um, how can I say the poorer areas of Stockholm I've seen that people take care of themselves I've seen people with face masks I've seen more social distancing I've seen guards walking, looking at the shops and just uh, don't letting them oh that's a swan I've seen um, guards outside the shops don't letting too many people in and that which is good and um, when you come to the area close to where I live <laughs> it's it's a more how can you say high society area it's more people with money that live here and what's interesting that I haven't seen anyone with a face mask over here it's like and uh, when I went, went to the to the BLTMA to buy car parts People uh, behind me didn't maintain their distance. They were like very close to me. 
I had to tell them harshly, keep maintain your, your distance. Don't come close to me. So I don't know. It's it's very it's very strange to me that in an old Swede area with uh, you know people that have higher education that they're acting like bigger assholes than in areas where they are working class people and uh, I don't know it's it's interesting to me it's very interesting to me I I, I can't explain that phenomenon and I, I really would like to understand why that is well as I said before uh, I, w I don't want to cover this coronavirus anymore I'm considering moving my tech channel here if you want to object to that <laughs> then do that um, uh, I don't have time to maintain uh, different vi videos different channels and I really want to know what you think I sh if I don't merge the channels I really want to know what you think I should talk about uh, what you want to know about from Sweden or from all the other things because I'm a kind of person I like to explore things I like to understand things well that's everything from from me and uh, Kitty over here so please stay safe uh, follow the recommendations from the different uh, authorities maintain your distance uh, but also yeah I don't know I don't know it's, it's a strange it's a very strange uh, uh, situation we're in and right now I'm just trying to survive the company uh, I've been starting to work with um, I will start working with um, with the moving company again now since I don't have many customers but just I mean I don't want to burn out my all my all of my resources at once but uh, also now I have actually managed to get uh, uh, get the customers so I can maintain myself for a few months so that's good I'm going to build some web pages I hate building web pages, but what? Well, you got to do. You got, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to the situation you're in. Uh, if you don't adapt, you die as a company, and that's one of the main strength of the human race is is our adaptability. Actually, that's what made us successful in the beginning. Okay, everyone, take care. Okay, bye.